After maintaining a holding pattern near O'Hare Airport, Flight 4184 was cleared to descend from 10,000 feet. Seconds later, the plane crashed into the earth, killing everyone aboard. Now, investigators would listen to the cockpit voice recorder as the plane began its fatal plunge. The crew's words during the terrifying last moments are taken from transcripts. chilling tape made it clear the pilots were completely broadsided. They didn't know they were in trouble until it was too late. But it raised more questions than it answered. Investigators were no closer to learning what happened. Their last hope lay inside the second box, the Flight Data Recorder, or FDR. Now all the plane's mechanical functions, or malfunctions, would be analyzed. Doug Brazy is a black box expert at NTSB. He's responsible for turning the complicated bits of data from FDRs into useful information. The data recorded by an FDR depends on the age and type of plane it's in. The one on flight 4184 monitored about 100 mechanical functions. Brazy downloaded the information to a computer using tape decks that translate the coded data. The information appears as charts and graphs on the computer. They represent the pilot's actions and the airplane's performance in the final minutes before it plunged to Earth. The readouts were placed side by side on a timeline to see their relationships. As the data appeared, Brazy discovered the plane had experienced an abrupt, catastrophic event. To get a better understanding, he created an animated version of the plane's last moments. It's very difficult to get a sense of time and how quickly or slowly things can unfold from looking at numbers and graphs. The animation helps us see how quickly or how slowly things develop in the accident sequence. The animation combines all the plane's functions just before it fell into a visual model that investigators can study. It began as the plane started its descent from 10,000 feet. Without warning, the autopilot disengaged. The ailerons, flaps on the wings that control flight, suddenly flipped. The plane rolled violently to the right. The pilots grabbed the controls and struggled to level out but the speed of the roll was too great. It yanked the controls out of their hands and the nose dived toward Earth. As they burst through the clouds, the ground filled their windshield, rushing toward them at 400 miles per hour. Futilely, the pilots pulled back on the controls to bring up the nose. The resulting strain on the tail was too great. It snapped off just before the plane hit the ground the animation made the sequence of events tragically clear. The airplane was in flight. When the airplane rolled, it initially rolled to approximately 77 degrees the first time, and the nose started to pitch down. The first officer was able to recover it slightly, and as he tried to pull the nose back up, the airplane then rolled again completely through 360 degrees, the nose pitched down, and the roll continued another approximately 140 degrees until the first officer was able to get the, the roll stopped. But because of the very steep attitude that the airplane was in, and as he tried to pull out, he had a lot of aerodynamic force on the tail section of the airplane because he was pulling extreme. He was actually moving these flight control surfaces to their maximum. High aerodynamic loads, this part of the airplane literally came off, and the airplane then basically went over on its nose, striking the ground, and then fragmenting and as it fragmented, this part of the aircraft ended up getting slingshotted to the furthest point in the wreckage area. It was now evident that the crash wasn't caused by the tail breaking off in flight. That left icing as the probable cause. 
But Brazy knew icing would normally show up on the screen as a slow, steady buildup, not a sudden cataclysm. What could have overpowered the plane so quickly and sent it careening to Earth? Thank you.